At the start of Chapter 5, as you follow the main path through the Woods of Ember, you'll meet the Pale Axe Stalwart. While he appears as a boss, I see him more as a quest-giving NPC. His attacks, all centered around his massive axe, are slow and predictable, making him relatively easy to overcome. Once you reduce his health to 25%, the battle concludes, and you can engage him in conversation to kick off a new quest. for a while. Can't imagine the chaos without me. The Brown Iron Cart is the first cart boss you'll encounter in Chapter 5. You'll find it just a short distance up the hill from where you faced the Pale Axe Stalwart, right before the Camp of Seasons Shrine. This enemy can be quite a nuisance, as it unleashes devastating flames directly in front of it. The battleground is somewhat cramped, but if you maneuver to its side and start targeting its wheels, you can avoid its slam attacks with some well-timed dodges. While it's not easily staggered, you can keep repeating this strategy until you bring it down with relative ease.
The father of stones stands as a menacing giant, ready to attack just a few steps away from the height of Ember Shrine. His double-barreled shout is annoying, but the encounter is straightforward. He may hit hard, yet his slow pace and uncomplicated attack methods make it easy to avoid damage. After you take him down, you can absorb his spirit, giving you access to that impressive double-barreled shout for your own arsenal. The Grey Bronze Cart is notorious for unleashing fiery blasts along this path, making it essential for you to swiftly dodge into one of the nearby alcoves whenever it strikes. As you get closer, you'll notice it mimics the attack style of the Brown Iron Cart, relying solely on a fiery breath and a powerful two-handed slam. If necessary, use your transformations to absorb some hits, but your primary goal should be to inflict maximum damage in a short time before retreating to safety in the nearest alcove to escape the flames. Fast as wind and quick as fire make up a formidable boss duo that you encounter right after the Grey Bronze Cart battle. A common mistake many players make is rushing into this fight without first returning to the nearest shrine to heal up from the previous encounter. However, I charged in and managed to defeat the duo on my first attempt, so you might find success too. 
This encounter requires a lot of dodging. The tricky part is managing to keep track of both bosses at once. Each one is relatively easy to damage, stagger, and dodge when alone. Together, they can be a bit bothersome, but if you keep them both in your line of sight and focus on one at a time, you should be able to handle the challenge without too much trouble.
you, boy, but these eyes have seen prettier disguises. Yao Guai! Your true face! Out with it! If a single lie slips, my rake shall strike true! <laughs> that was so close. Thank you for saving me. I am the Bull King's daughter, Ping Ping. Oh, nonsense! The Bull has no daughter! Dare to fool me, scoundrel! <laughs> I... I know who you are! My mother is Princess Fairfox. You killed her! <clears throat> After my mother died, I've been living with my father. His wife, Princess Rikshasi, took me in as her own. Later, brother came back from Bodhisattva Guan Yin, and we reunited. We had some peaceful days. My brother was kind to me and to our parents. But somehow, not long ago, he suddenly changed. He secretly summoned his old troops for a coup, imprisoned father, kept mother under strict watch. I... I had nowhere else to turn. I had to go for help. But barely after leaving the place, his minions fell upon me. <laughs> the Bull King's might is known. Even together, Wukong and I couldn't rival him. Rakshasi's plantain fan is also formidable. And you want me to believe that they were subdued by a kid? Subdued by their son? Who else could make them put their guard down? Really, with soft hearts, they could never harm him. You idiot! This fox is fooling you! Look at this place! Only my brother's Samadhi fire could wreak such havoc! Oh no! My father is dying. Please, kind monkey, help me and my family. A perilous place this is. Keep this cicada safe with you. It'll come in handy. That's a voice I know well. I'll go ahead and take a look. The Flint Chief is the first boss you might overlook in Chapter 5. You can find it near the Valley Entrance Shrine, where it will emerge from the rocks as you get closer. Given the Flint Chief's large stature, your main focus should be on its enormous arms. The best approach is to dodge around to its side while delivering attacks, especially when you have enough focus points to unleash your most powerful charged heavy attacks. If you want to speed things up, spells like Immobilize and Cloud Step can be very effective.
When it comes to mechanics, this fight mirrors the previous showdown against fast as wind and quick as fire. One adversary will hang back and launch ranged attacks, while the other will charge at you with fire-based moves. The key difference this time is that you can't take one down right away. If you deal enough damage to one, they'll retreat for a bit, forcing you to deal with the other. However, you should aim to focus on one opponent quickly, as they aren't particularly threatening when separated. This visually stunning boss battle unfolds in two distinct phases. Initially, you face the Keeper of Flaming Mountains, who poses little threat on his own, but frequently calls forth dark and light minions to challenge you. Speed is essential in this encounter. Quickly eliminate the archers to prevent being overwhelmed, and then turn your attention to the melee fighters. During the second summoning, you'll encounter Ma Tianba, the formidable horse. Man, you've likely faced multiple times throughout your journey. He's a tough opponent, wielding a whip that has an impressive range. 
After dealing with Ma Tianba, the Keeper of Flaming Mountains will summon the Yin Yang Fish, signaling the start of the second phase. Prepare for a barrage of projectile attacks and tail swipes, both of which can be dodged with some practice. Remember, if one attack lands, they all will, so precise timing in your dodges is crucial. Words from cunning foxes. You just want to trade my fan for a smile on your brother's face. I, I owe my life to father. And to your kindness for taking me in. Brother was good to me, but I would never betray my parents for him. Say no more of the fan. We raised the boy. Guess this is what we deserve. But you... Why are you here at this very moment? Rakshasi, I'm not a part of your family, and I'm aware I have no voice in this. But Ping told me the Destined One had arrived. <laughs> the Destined One, who doesn't even know what he's destined for. Those old bastards must have pulled a muscle coming up with the name. You and I both know who he truly is. When the time comes, your children, your husband, and even this very palace could all turn to ashes. What do I have to fear from a mere pawn? He's no match for us. He can't even rival the power of my fan. Once the truth is revealed, suddenly he is here. Do you not find it odd? Such a twist of fate. The truth? The truth of what? Who are you talking about? I heard the Destined One had obtained all the other relics. Rakshasi, your situation is grave. Do you not see who mandated his return? Were those relics really bestowed for your good? Perhaps amid these schemes and plots, we've unwittingly become stepping stones for his rebirth. For others, I care not. All along, you are all I care for. I say we should leave together. I vow to treasure you dearly, just like when we're up there. I never thought that one day you'd be the only one I can rely on. I am overwhelmed. Come, sit with me, and tell me what to do. Don't let him, Mother! Don't you see? He is taking advantage of you! You lecher! I call for your help, not your treachery! How, how dare you! A child of a concubine should know better manners. When I first crossed paths with her, your bull of a father was no more than livestock, munching on a patch of grass. Have you no shame? Mother, don't be fooled! Enough of your endless prattle. Hmm. <coughs> now, that's better. Rakshasi, have we not been this close since our time in Tushita Palace? Well, yes, I do miss the old days, too. We oh, were so happy back then. What's in the blazes? No, no tricks, tricks here. here. It's, it's just, just my, my hoof. hoof. You, you deserve, deserve to know, to know before, before we kiss. kiss. You will live to repent this! Filthy <sighs> lowlife! You dare take her form and beguile me! My old friend, wasn't it fun? Have we not been this close since our carnage in the fox den? <laughs> you abhorrent fraud! My candid words were wasted on your foul ears! Candid, my hoof! Your revenants are everywhere! I thought you'd have better lies! Quick on your heels, huh? Well then, boy, let us teach this brazen adulterer a lesson.
vile beast. Your savagery knows no cure. But you will behave once my sourceless water from Toshita drops. I've aided your journey once. Now I shall aid you again on your way to death. From yin and yang arises two sides. From land and sky emerges a divide. Now you shall be feasted upon by my yin yang fish. What a stingy host! Such a meager fish. Hardly enough for a platter.
truth has been revealed. Disasters are sure to follow. The turmoil you witness is but a ripple caused by a drop from above. <laughs> Already. Bad news after a good nap. <laughs> He's gone too far from a furnished servant. A decent lad he was. <sighs> decent until ruined by brother Wu Kong. Then destiny carried him further to fall for the wrong woman. <laughs> <sighs> You, go up this way. Check if any way leads up. I'll go look around. The owner might be gone, but her treasure might still be there. The Crimson Silver Cart is definitely a step up in aggression from the previous versions, so it might catch you off guard. It can emit flames from its sides and back to deter flanking attacks, and will rush at you if you pause for a breather. Nevertheless, like its predecessors, it has a soft spot a solid charged heavy attack aimed at its back will make quick work of it. What a great fight! <laughs> you see how I swung my axe? <laughs> Someone fed that unruly boy a load of nonsense, and now he's running amok. Why doesn't the king take action? With his might, he could take down ten red boys! Uh, I can see the king from here. Stripped of his mount and weapon. I wonder what's behind all this. What else is hidden in this mountain? Or I, I feel blind. Blind! We should find the king's mount first. The Bishwi beast is treasured by the king as his own kin. How could it simply vanish? The nine-capped Lingzigui may appear unassuming, but don't be fooled, it's a real menace. This creature unleashes toxic fumes at every chance it gets, but its most dangerous trick is tossing its hat at you. Once it sticks, you'll find your movement and dodging abilities severely hampered, all while suffering from a gradual poison effect. This can lead to a rapid end, so if you find yourself in this situation, look for ways to counteract it, like transforming or using Cloud Step. 
Overall, make sure to rely heavily on spells during this encounter, as the nine-capped Ling Guai can become quite formidable if allowed to operate freely. The Flint Vanguard is essentially the same as the Flint Chief, making it relatively straightforward to deal with. If it weren't for the swarm of irritating minions surrounding him, these little troublemakers are tough to stagger, and they can quickly overwhelm you if you're not on your toes. You can utilize Flock of Many to divert their focus, then swiftly eliminate the minions before turning your attention back to the main target. The primary challenge in this battle is that you likely expended a significant amount of your mana on the Flint Vanguard earlier. However, aside from that, it's a relatively simple encounter that requires you to dodge a barrage of fiery projectiles while swiftly taking down the smaller flamlings that show up.
This cart is the toughest cart in the game, boasting impressive mobility and a substantial health pool that you'll need to chip away at gradually. Your best strategies involve using a flock of many, immobilize, and charged heavy attacks. Don't count on the rusty gold cart to falter. Instead, focus on maneuvering around to its rear while staying ready to evade its fiery blasts. Lang Lang is yet another massive frog guai lurking to the left, just past the icy archway of the rusty gold cart once you step through. This creature inflicts scorch damage and wields a fiery tongue, so it's wise to prepare with some scorch resistance. However, the battle remains similar to previous encounters. Watch out for its backward kicks and tongue strikes, but aside from that, 
You should handle this fight without too much trouble. Just a short distance down the path past the Purge Pit Shrine, you'll encounter another challenging boss duo. Top takes bottom, and bottom takes top. This battle ramps up the difficulty compared to the last duo. Instead of vanishing when one of them is low on health, they retreat into their hemisphere, becoming invulnerable. This mechanic forces you to focus on the other boss. It's a tougher situation than mere disappearance, as they can pop back out to strike at you before retreating again. Fortunately, their attacks are straightforward and well-telegraphed, allowing you to easily maneuver around them and chip away at their health. Oh, you're wet, sluggard! 
The Bishui Golden-Eyed Beast serves as the primary antagonist in Bishui Cave and ranks as the second toughest boss in Chapter 5, primarily due to its fierce aggression. Throughout the battle, this beast will ignite the entire arena, so it's crucial to maximize your Scorch resistance. The Flock of Many isn't the best option in this fiery environment, so conserve your mana for transformations and consider using either Cloud Step or Rock Solid.
The battle revolves around the concepts of distance and fire. The Red Boy prefers to unleash a variety of ranged assaults instead of engaging in close combat. He employs shockwaves, summons, and even allows his double-bladed spear to autonomously strike at you. When he does choose to fight up close, he relies on rapid dash attacks that can catch you off guard. Luckily, the Red Boy's health isn't particularly high, and he is vulnerable to your spells, especially Immobilize. Additionally, he can be easily staggered, making transformations a powerful strategy to maintain control over him. How can you say that to me? I went through flames to find the destined one for you. For you, father, don't you see? if it's true after I hunt her down. But first, I should burn you two together and mix your ashes to honor your friendship. Entertainment. That can wait.
As the ultimate challenge of Chapter 5, the Yaksha King stands out as the most formidable foe throughout the entire chapter. It's important to note that he is distinct from the Red Boy, as dying in this battle allows you to respawn at the Fallen Furnace Crater Shrine, without having to face the Red Boy again. This makes the encounter a bit more forgiving. Fortunately, you'll have Zhubaji by your side during the initial phase of the fight. However, don't underestimate the Yaksha King. He packs a serious punch. I recommend honing your skills without using consumables until you feel more assured. Then bring out your strongest potions to enhance your chances of success. The rock solid ability can be a game changer here, along with the golden lining transformation, which helps you effectively parry many of the Yaksha King's attacks. Be especially wary of his most lethal move, where he conjures two long flames and spins them in a series of wide reaching, devastating strikes. The timing for this combo can be tricky. So if you find yourself struggling, consider activating your transformation and staying close to him. This way, you can inflict damage while absorbing hits without draining your health. Destined, deprived, it's all the same. Causes and effects, not what you're called. <laughs> Thanks to this false death talisman. Poor Keeper. Seems his legacy was his only offer after all. No wonder not a single raindrop was fanned. It was your trick the whole time. <sighs> My bad, old bull. I was a bit delayed. You little rascal. I'll teach you a lesson on your parents' behalf.
stay. Holding on, despite it all. Does your vengeance weigh more than your family? Spit it out now, his relic! My king. I'm sorry for my lateness. I turned to them, but none offered help. My lady, forget it. I implore you to show mercy and spare my son. He is the last of the Yaksha's bloodline in the West. With an origin most tragic and twisted. Now, he poses a threat no more. Should you grant him mercy, I, Rakshasi, and the Bull King shall retreat ourselves to secluded meditation. Along with our children, we will never leave the mountain again. He is our son. We will bear his punishment. If it pleases you, my plant in fan is also yours to take. Flames have paved my way. Through flames, I shan't stray. Vain was my flame for a revenge destined to stray. Their delight lies in our submission, kneeling and begging. 